okay, let's talk about what the heck happened yesterday, because so much stuff happened. So if you somehow missed it, Darko held a 24-hour charity stream for WWF, and every donation milestone that we reached, Darko would reveal a brand new screenshot from FNAF Security Breach. Originally, Darko had 14 screenshots from SB, and then Scott and Stairwall gave him another five, bumping the total up to 19 teasers. Honestly, these teasers all look incredible. I don't want to waste any more time. Uh, I am going to talk about a few quick things before we hop into the teasers themselves. Other bonus news that was sprinkled across the charity stream. So thank you so much for clicking on the video. Subscribe if you're new. Smash the like button. And let's hop into it. So like I said, before we hop into the security breach teasers of the gameplay of the frickin' game, I want to quickly touch upon some other news that Darko, again, had sprinkled throughout the, the charity stream. First up is Dark Trap coming soon to Dark Deception, Monsters, and Mortals. I'm sure I don't have to explain Dark Deception, Monsters, and Mortals. I'm sure you've already seen loads of videos on it, and it is very exciting that Dark Trap is coming into the game very soon. Darko did reveal that the character is in early development, so technically coming soon is not that soon, but hopefully sometime this year. He also showed off some whip images of the Darko FNAF show plushie. Something that is incredible about this plushie is that there is a music box inside of it, and it will play, according to Darko, one of his FNAF songs on his channel. Maybe even a new one that we haven't heard of yet. He also did hint at the possibilities of there being a season 3 of the FNAF show for voice actors and actresses for FNAF Security Breach, if they would be up for it. He showed off his cover of the FNAF 1 Big Band song, I'll play it right now. To finally roam and invite newcomers to play with us. For many years we've been all alone. We're forced to be still and play the same songs we've known since. He sounds absolutely amazing, and I love, absolutely love. The animations. He also revealed that there will be a scene where he is green screened onto the show stage singing along with the animatronics up on stage. He even showed off the masquerade mask that he's going to be wearing and let me just say oh my god it looks amazing I freaking love that mask. He showed off a whip of the Darkest Desires 2 song. The backstory behind the song is that Dark Trap has now taken over Darko and he is tricking Darko into taking over the world with him because let that, that's just what villains want to do. And also at the end of the song, Darko said that Dark Trap will be taking over to Houston, CG5, and DA games. So I'm sure that we can see some appearances from those people, which is very exciting. He also confirmed that there will be a third song after Dark's Desires 2 to continue the saga of Dark Trap. The story behind the next song will be Dark Trap taking over us, the YouTube viewers. And Darko says that he hopes to get Markiplier or MatPat on for the song. I'll play the work in progress right now. Okay now, listen here, Darko. Actually, it doesn't matter, because you'll do exactly what I say anyway. <laughs> and of course, I want to take over the world. What villain doesn't? So, let me tell you my plan, and you tell me your brightest idea to make that plan a reality. Sound good? Of course it sounds good. Call me Master Man behind the master plan. I'm gonna do what I want with a friend like you. Who? Me, he, you, who? Me, why does it have to be me? Cause you are the key to my brilliant, magnificent plan. Now look into these stunning eyes, so my soul and your soul collide. Also, I forgot to mention that Darko's Lonely Freddy song is coming out in the summer. And finally, something that is unbelievably exciting, right? I, I first heard about this and I was like, oh my god, I am so glad that Darko is reaching out to new territories. Darko unveiled Project H, which stands for Project Hex. It is Darko's own universe of comics, maybe a cartoon in the future, with voice actors, and maybe even hints at a game. He showed off a poster for it, and oh my god, it looks absolutely incredible. I am actually extremely hyped for this. I think it looks amazing so far. He showed off some merchandise for a hoodie and plushies, and even some work in progress of the comic itself. He also has him as a plushie and also a 
unconfirmed FNAF X Hex uh, collab. So yeah, some very exciting stuff all around the board, but I know why you're here. The 19 dollar Fortnite coin, the 19 security breach teasers that were revealed throughout the stream. I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. I'm not gonna waste any more time. Let's hop into them. The first couple are kind of basic, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on them, but when we get towards the end, that's when we really need to get talking. So like I said at the beginning, Darko sprinkled out some brand new, never before seen screenshots of the gameplay of Security Breach throughout the stream. There's 19 in total, and this is the first one. As you can see, it is the Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex sign. Now I don't know if this is in game, I'm assuming it is because all of the other ones are gameplay screenshots, so I'm assuming this is probably towards the entrance of the building. We have seen this logo before on the calendar for Security Breach all the way back last year. Not really much to talk about, I still freaking love the sign, I adore the art, and let's move on. The second screenshot is the underground corridor, as we saw in the tech demo, and I also believe the gameplay trailer. Darko revealed that the name for this location is the Utila Doors, what I'm assuming to be a combination of utility and corridors, and apparently, I didn't know about this, but these are used in Disneyland Disney World. Sorry to break the illusion uh, for all those little kitties out there going to Disney, but there are secret tunnels underneath the parks where employees can go from one place to another very quickly without having to walk all the way around on the surface. So I'm assuming that's exactly what this location is for. We saw it near the end of the corridor. There are two symbols. One is a pizza and one is a green L. The pizza symbol probably leads to a restaurant, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, or the dining room. And L, I'm assuming, is a lower level. I don't think it would be laser tag because as we see in the gameplay trailer, there is a space symbol. So I'm assuming that or like a laser tag gun symbol would be used instead of an L. So I'm assuming at some points we're able to go underneath the building and quickly travel between locations. Some form of fast travel maybe or just more open world. It could be a quicker way to escape from the animatronics as we are seen running through the utility doors in the gameplay trailer. I don't know, just my thought. Next up is the Phaser Blast Arena. That is the official name of teaser number three. As we're gonna see later on in a separate teaser, F-A-Z-E-R is the official spelling for this area. Fazbear, laser, phaser. Which I think is a brilliant play on words because a phaser is the actual like emission of the laser. So yeah, just a better shot of the laser tag area. We can see the cardboard cutout of Glamrock Freddy and Glamrock Chica. It looks like the two teams we have are the green team and the red team. And there is a giant freaking rocket ship in the middle of the arena. Now I do believe if you look slightly to the left of Glamrock Freddy's cutout, you can see the disco ball room, though it's hard to tell if that is what that is. It's crazy just how big this location is. Right? We're barely scratching the surface, and already this room alone is freaking huge, and we know there's like 20 more rooms. Anyways, yeah, a better look at the laser tech area. Moving on to teaser number four. So teaser number four is a better look. It's actually the same shot as we saw in the tech demo of the Mexican restaurant in the Pizza Plex. We can now officially see that, yes, that is L chip off to the right side of the image on stage right there. And also we have a little cleaning bot. If you guys remember, one of the voices on voices.com was a clean bot. So I'm guessing that's exactly what this little buddy is. We can also see all the Faz Fizzy stations off to the left and also the arcade way in the back. Like I said, we have seen this in the tech demo, so I'm gonna move on. Teaser number five is better looks at the cardboard cutouts of Freddy, Chica, Roxanne, and Montgomery. Darko says that this is the counter in the arcade area, and other than that, there's not really much to talk about. I do believe this is our first time seeing the cutout of Roxanne, if I remember correctly, so that is very enticing. Very exciting. Yeah, moving on to number six. Number six is very exciting because this is the entrance to what is officially called Roxy's Raceway. I freaking love this area. It's lined with go-karts, motorcycles, and other accessories. There's a giant trophy off to the left with another cutout of Roxanne, which looks amazing, dude. I love the stars on the ceiling, and I love the purple neon lights. It fits Roxanne very well. Moving on. Teaser number seven is a hallway in the Pizza Plex. Not really much to talk about here. You can see Chica of the Sea poster off to the left with Mermaid Glamrock Chica and also a Moondrop teaser, or poster excuse me, showing off Moondrop. So I think this officially confirms now 
that his name is indeed Moondrop, if we had any doubts. We can see the cutout of Roxanne from her raceway off on the wall on the right, and also a rocket ship ride just kind of in the middle of the hallway. Further down the hallway, you can see cutouts of Monty and Chica, and also, I believe, is that the arcade? I believe it is. It's also worth pointing out, some people are saying that this right here is a set of eyes. Darko confirms that that is indeed an ATM machine, okay? Moving on to teaser number eight, this is the entrance to Monty's Gator Golf Course. Weirdly enough, the entrance to the golf course has not Monty cutouts, instead Freddy cutouts. And so many Freddy plushies lining the entrance. What is going on? I feel like they're about to take over frickin' Manhattan. There's so many plushies. But yeah, you can see the teaser images, the OG teaser images for Jam, which I believe was Monty, and also Party, which I believe was Chica. And again, as you're walking in, you once again see the Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex neon sign. I also do like that it looks like we are walking onto a course, onto the green as we walk into the, the golf course itself. I feel like that's a nice little touch. And speaking of Monty's Gator Golf Course, the next teaser, teaser number nine, is a better shot of it. <laughs> As you can see, there's a ball ride. It looks like it's kind of like a teacup ride, but instead of teacups, it's golf balls. And off to the left, you can see a slide going down into a ball pit, something that we were in in the gameplay trailer, though I don't know if this is the exact one that we saw in the trailer. You can see a lot of greenery, a lot of shrubbery up on the ceiling, and also green lights. I love the floor with Monty's face on it. His face looks so long. <laughs> And also, there was a giant Monty's Gator Golf sign and a Let's Party sign off to the right. I also love the image of Monty teeing up, ready to hit a ball, even though there was no ball on the tee. So something that I forgot to mention is that this teaser of Monty's Golf Course is titled Sub Lobby, or at least this area is called a Sub Lobby lobby. A very interesting choice, because as far as we're aware, this is the only sub lobby. I'm sure there's gonna be more. It's a freaking huge pizza plex. But it is interesting that what appears to be just the golf course itself, right? This isn't the entrance to it. It's not like the exit. It doesn't even look like a place where you would chill out. It's called a sub lobby. Also, sub lobby, sub below. Maybe the golf course spans several stories, you know, at one point it's the first story and then it goes down to a lower level, a sub level, where there was a sub lobby. And again, it's just weird to me that the golf course is, or at least this area of the golf course is called a sub lobby. I don't know, you guys can think about that, take it however way you want. It's just weird to me that the golf course of all things is a sub lobby. You can tell that Steerwall is so happy with how the golf course came out because they have supplied so many teasers for the golf course. I'm not complaining. I think it looks absolutely incredible. Moving on to teaser number 10. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. This is incredible. It looks like we are inside of the belly of Montgomery, as we're gonna see later on, we do go inside of his mouth, which is a little weird. Yeah, as you can see, the wall and ceiling are all red, kind of meaty-ish in nature, and also it looks like the rib cage lines the ceiling. And also there's a dead fish bone, because of course there would. Gators eat fish. So as you can see, we're about to tee up to hole 13, and we know from this teaser and also a past gameplay trailer that there are at least 18 holes. We can see that there are cardboard cutouts of Monty, Chica, and Freddy off in the distance. And how can I forget the giant Monty head spewing water? That's just gotta be my favorite goddamn thing of all time. That looks absolutely incredible, amazing incredibly amazing. I freaking love it so much. Moving on to teaser number 11. This is what I'm talking about. We are inside the mouth of Monty Gator. And if I had to take a guess, I don't know. It's weird that we're inside of him. Uh, I don't like that sentence. At hole 13, and then the next hole, 14, is us coming out of his mouth. So do we like go in from the other end? I don't want to think about that too much. Hey, look at T-posing Monty. Hey, look at him go. Look at him T-pose. Yeah, guys, these are like, even though these are gameplay screenshots, of course, they're still working on the game. So not everything's going to be spot on, which is why we got T-posing hologram Monty in the background. Yeah, man, I'm just freaking loving this golf course. Like, I'm looking around at the trees, the lights. Oh my gosh. 
It looks absolutely incredible. I cannot wait to play golf with Monty. It also looks like one of the holes, I believe 14, is going into an RV. That's interesting. I don't think it means anything, just a interesting course design. And teaser number 12 is a brand new area we have yet to see. This is the Glam Rock Beauty Salon, the famous one at that. So apparently it looks like Freddy Fazbear is about to get a little bit of a Freddy fresh cut, if you know what I mean. Inside the salon, we can see that there's a counter with a neon sign of Roxanne's head and also a cutout or a poster, actually, of Monty. There's a Freddy trash bin. <laughs> On the, on the absolute left side of the screen. And it looks like the salon is in kind of like a deserty area. I think Darko says it looks a bit like Radiator Springs from Pixar's Cores, if you know, if you've seen that movie. Moving on, teaser number 13 is yet another shot of the beauty salon. It looks like off to the right side of the building, there's a gas station and also a play area. We can see a slide and there is a road. So, maybe this is linked to Roxy's Raceway, I doubt it, just cause the aesthetics of the two areas don't seem to mix at all. But yeah, now that I'm seeing the tires, you know, with the lightning bolt sign and the road, definitely, and also like the, the Mesa things in the background, like, dude, I'm getting some mad cores vibes right now pixels cores right now we can also see a bit more of the inside of the salon we can see there's a poster of roxanne i think that this is monty and also another poster of glamrock freddy and that is the brand new area of the glamrock beauty salon moving on to teaser number 14 again this was originally the final teaser that we were going to get but then Scott and Steel Wall gave Darko five more. Teaser number 14 is what I'm assuming to be maybe like a main hub area. It is a gigantic dining area with signs to so many different locations, including Bonnie Bull. That's right, Bonnie the Bunny is back and he is in security breach. Feels good, man. Interesting that he does not take on a Glamrock appearance, much like Foxy, as we're gonna see later on, and another returning character. They don't take on a brand new appearance, instead having their old designs from their old games. And as we know from the museum area, that's what we're assuming we saw in the gameplay trailer, we know that they definitely do have relics of the past in the Pizza Plex. Yeah, Bonnie's back always feels good. As we can see off to the right, there's a gigantic stage, presumably for some animatronics. And we see signs for the Phaser Blast, again, as you can see, F-A-Z-E-R, Roxy's Raceway, and also the beauty salon that we just talked about. I really hope that we're going to be able to see this area like packed full of people. People, I think that would be so amazing to see because it's a very lively location, you know? Like there's lights everywhere, there's fancy equipment, there's like chewy animatronics and decorations. So it just feel, it, it would feel weird if we never saw people in the establishment, if you know what I mean. So now we move on to the five bonus teasers. These are very interesting because technically, these are areas, or at least four of them, are areas that we've seen previously in the gameplay trailer, but now they've been given updated designs and they look so goddamn good. Starting off, teaser number 15, bonus teaser number one, Glamrock Chica's Green Room is what it's officially called. As you can see, the decorations and overall aesthetic and theme of the room is so much better than what we saw in the gameplay trailer. Still, well, I freaking love you. This looks amazing. So each green room for the characters fit their theme and personality. This one for Chica is all about food. As you can see, there's a lot of empty pizza boxes. There's a, a poster that says fitness food. There's an ice cream sign. There's lots of pizza on the wall. Just a very food thematic room. Also, there's a giant cake on the table. It looks absolutely delicious. There's party balloons, balloons that have Chica's face on it lights camera lights there's an area for her to do all of her makeup there's a chica chicken sign with a heart around it so it seems like chica's room is all about food and i guess just like looking pretty being glamorous something to note is that chica is not on stage right now so that's interesting we saw her on stage in the teaser i mean the uh, the gameplay trailer so it's interesting that she's gone now moving on to teaser number 16. This is Roxanne Wolf's green room. As you can see, the door behind her stage has been closed behind the curtains. And her room is all about 
go-karts. Hell yeah, baby. There's tires, there's checkered flags, there's wrenches all along the walls. Once again, she has her own glam station with uh, camera lights sprinkled around her room. All the rooms are basically identical. The only difference is what character occupies the room. And from that point on, you can determine the decorations around the place. Something to note is that the arcade machine in the back has Foxy and what appears to be Funtime Foxy on the cabinet. Oh, also Roxanne's gone too, but her keto is still there. But Foxy and Funtime Foxy make a return appearance. It also seems like the arcade could be called Freddy in Space 3, which is interesting. So now we're gonna move on to the next green room, number 17. This is Montgomery Gator's green room, and we gotta talk, okay? We gotta have a discussion. What happened here? What is going on? The sign is falling off the wall. It's been cracked. There are claw marks on the left door. The freaking couch has been flipped. Okay, so clearly Monty's a very angry dude. Notable, you know, we all have those times. But this is extreme. His freaking sign's halfway off the wall. What happened? So before we talk about that, let's talk about the decorations. Of course, his room is themed around golfing and nature. Once again, the shrubbery returns with golf decorations all around the place. Heck, his table is a miniature mini golf course. But screw golfing, let's talk about your anger issues, Monty. So clearly, it is being expressed to us that Monty is a very angry and destructive human being. Except he's not a human, he is a robot. Again, he's scratching at the door, he's ripped off his own sign, he's flipped over the couch, he's angry. And from that, I think it's pretty safe to say that it's most likely Monty, who is the big angry voice who's demanding they bring him what he wants. Now this is just my theory. My game theory. It's not confirmed, obviously. His freaking lights out! One of his lights is out! Oh my god, I just noticed that! Yeah, it's my theory that Monty's probably the angry voice in the trailer, demanding either Chica and Roxanne, or Freddy and Gregory, Fanny, Vanessa, or the Sun and Moon animatronic to bring him what he wants. It is a weird choice that they decided to make specifically Monty kind of the, the big angry baddie, baddie animatronic. Not like a bad bitch, like freaking Roxanne, holy crap. But like a big angry dude. I don't know why they are putting such importance on Monty. It's interesting. But yeah, that's my theory is that it's probably Monty who's the angry voice in the gameplay trailer. At this point, now that we've seen the destruction that he's caused, I don't know if he is being controlled by Glitchy, or boy Glitchtrap, when he's demanding people bring him what he wants. Unless Glitchtrap hacked into him, or possessed him, whatever, made him all mad, he tore apart his room, he escaped, and now he's demanding they bring- I don't know. It's, it's so fascinating how they are um, trying to portray the behavior of Monty. I don't know, man. It's, it's so weird. Please tell me. What do you guys think in the comments? Like, what is up with Monty? Why is he so angry? Why are you such an angry boy? All right, we're going to finish off the green rooms with the second to last teaser, number 18. Of course, it's Freddy Fazbear. Also, please give me that giant Glamrock Freddy plushie. I need it. I need that right now. Yeah, so based off of this room, it seems like Glamrock Freddy is very... He's very popular among the group, which makes sense. I mean, he is Freddy Fazbear himself. He has lots of pictures up on the wall of him, posters. He has a gigantic mirror compared to the other characters. But something that I want to point out, and Daco made sure to express this little information right here, is that the door to the stage is open. Now, it's hard to make out what's behind it, but it appears to be some boxes. Which is, which is great. Also, that may look like a fence, some fenced off area, and also maybe a door. I don't know, it's, it's hard to tell. So it seems like there is a backstage area, but it may not be exactly what we were expecting it to be. Also, something I wanna point out, which a lot of people have been pointing out, because it's very interesting, Freddy, up on his wall, has drawings from FNAF 1 and FNAF 2. Like I said, we already know that they have relics from the past games, we've seen Call the Cupcake, Mr. Cupcake, in a display case. We've seen other uh, relics like guitars and stuff in display cases in a museum, which is what we're thinking that area is. But if they are trying to preserve artifacts from these past locations, 
why would they put them up on the wall of Freddy's area, his green room? Wouldn't you want to like frame them and put them up on the wall in, in the museum area of the Megaplex? Why would they put them in Freddy's room unless maybe, and this is a theory, I, I saw people talk about this on Twitter, maybe Glamrock Freddy has memories of the other Freddy's. It sounds weird, but think about this. Freddy is the only good guy in the game. He's the only good animatronic that we know of so far. He he is yet to be seen chasing after us, and we know he's gonna be helping Gregory. So maybe he knows what's going on. He knows that the other characters are bad, as a killer, because he has memories of the other characters in other locations from the past. It's a wild theory. I know it is a huge stretch of the imagination to say, oh, this very specific character, but then again, it's like, it's there. He is the only good one. I don't know. It's a thought. What do you guys think? And now, the final teaser. Sorry this video has been so long. I just, I really love talking about this game. I, if you can't tell already, I'm, I'm very excited for this game, and I guess now's my time to talk about it. I am looking forward to this game. I don't think it's gonna be bad. I, I've seen so many people crap on the game just because it's so different from anything we've seen. It is so different from any past FNAF game. I, I realize people are concerned, I realize that people are not looking forward to the game because it's so different from anything we've seen. And I think, I think that's what we need though, right? Looking back, all the FNAF games, and I said this on Twitter, all the FNAF games feel very samey. But I feel like this is the one game that can finally break the mold and make the series go in a completely new direction. And one that I'd be completely down for. I've said this since the start. I have full trust in Scott and Steelwall. I I know that they know what's best for the series. Okay, so if like I I trust them. I I really do sincerely trust them with everything. Because depending on how this game goes, that will dictate the entirety of the series going forward in the future. Depending on how this game goes, how it plays, mechanic-wise, and all that other stuff, how it's received from the community and how it's received from critics. I realize that this has been a long video, so I won't talk about it for a super long amount of time, but even though this game is very different from anything we've seen, that doesn't mean I'm like not hyped for it. I'm not going on Twitter saying, this looks like crap because it's so different. To be fair, the gameplay trailer and what I assume to be like all the other trailers were, and it, I mean, these fucking teasers prove it to us. Like, look at how different the rooms are. They were like early test copies of the game, right? The game's still not done. They're still working on it, putting so much effort into it. And you can tell from these green rooms just how much they've changed and how much effort they're putting into this game. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This isn't a FNAF era video. I don't know why I started yelling. <laughs> Anyways, let's finish it off. Teaser number 19. Here it is. And my, oh my, what happened? So let me calm down and let's think through this. Okay, so this area is called the sewers. According to Darko, this area is called the sewers. And as you can see, there is indeed a sewer pipe on the wall, protruding from the wall. There's also two doors and one has a red light and one does not have any light on. Of course, I'm ignoring the giant broken down withered salvage Glamrock Chica for the meantime. We'll get to her eventually. In fact, let's get to her right now. Okay, so as you can see, Glamrock Chica is missing what appears to be her arm, her left arm, and also her beak because it's Chica and she can never keep track of her goddamn beak. She's very busted up. Chips, cracks everywhere, missing parts everywhere. Who did this? Quite literally, who did this? The only person I can think of is most likely our boy Glitchy. Glitch Trap William Afton, the 12 foot tall William Afton amalgamation of the FNAF 1 animatronics. I do have another video on Security Breach coming out very soon on who the big baddie is for this game, who the big claw, the big meaty claw is at the end of the gameplay trailer. So I'm not gonna touch upon it too much here. I wanna focus on Chica. So clearly something went wrong. Clearly someone is out to get the animatronics or this is a separate Chica. Maybe there's multiple of them. I mean, we do know that there are holograms. We have seen more than one Monty's, but I feel like it would make more sense if this is Glamrock Chica and she has been attacked and taken apart by someone. Vanny, Glitch Trap, William Afton, I don't know, 
but who could do such a thing to our poor girl Glamrock Chica? And that is all of the teasers. My, oh my, I'm sorry for making this video so long. Again, I just love talking about Security Breach. I'm so hyped for it, and I can't freaking wait. If you made it to the end, thank you, subscribe. Like I just said, I have another video on Security Breach coming out soon. So subscribe so you don't miss that. Hit the bell, smash the like. I'll see you on the flip side. Sorry for making the video so long.